said, starting the vlog. Um, got up the crack of dawn over here in Jerusalem. And uh, now headed to our ride. We all take a, uh, you know, just like the tourists, <laughs> we all take a bus together, we all ride together. We all, uh, uh, you know, just like you would. Um, and are gonna hit up the locations today. Today's the Jordan Valley. Uh, so it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. I look forward to it, guys. And um, good morning. at the Alon uh, Overlook. We're looking over the Jordan Valley here, which we'll be touring today. It's uh, uh, really beautiful views here. You can see behind me. Um, I filmed it earlier, so you'll see that. Um, so what we're learning from here basically is how the uh, development of this area came about, especially after 1967, uh, after one of our uh, generals um, military men gave a, a plan called the Alon Plan and uh, much of that has to do with how it affects actually our politics today even though the plan never was accepted on either the Jordanian or Israeli side but yet it has a lot to do with how our politics play out today with for example the Oslo Accords and uh, other discussions about this area that are very politically charged. So anyhow, lots of fun. We're learning about this area. It's beautiful. Uh, beautiful, 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 definitely worth a drive coming through this uh, area and checking it out, guys. Now we continue our drive through the Jordan Valley, heading towards our next stop where we're going to get ourselves a cup of coffee to get ready for the rest of the big, long day. All right, here we are having our breakfast break this morning, a little coffee break here. And uh, so we're in the Jordan Valley. You see behind me these beautiful mountains. Looks like desert, right? The whole Jordan Valley is pretty much just, a, it's desert, except for the uh, agricultural development here that is just beautiful. You'll see greenery all of a sudden out of the middle of this desert. You see the mountains of Jordan on the other end of the Jordan, Jordan Valley. Uh, so you see Jordan. You also have the geographical uh, divide here, the Syrian African Reef that cuts right along Highway 90 here, which is where this, uh, where we're stopped at here. Uh, it's a nice little coffee break area, rest stop, gas station. That's along the highway here of Highway 90, which is the longest highway that goes all the way down past Eilat and all the way up to uh, Metula in the north. So it crosses the whole country. It's the longest road in Israel, Highway 90 and uh, that's where we're at right now. And that is right along the geographical fault line of the, the Syrian African fault line. After a 13 minute drive to our next location, there's actually an interesting piece of history or more modern history to this place, which is known as the Adam Bridge. This is one of the bridges out of many that were part of a special operation by the Haganah that planned on the night between June 16 to June 17 in 1946 to destroy these bridges connecting between the British Mandate of Palestine to the neighboring countries Lebanon, Syria, Transjordan, and Egypt in order to suspend the transportation routes used by the British Army. Attacks on a further three bridges had been considered, but none were executed. Also the place where uh, Jacob crossed over when he came back to his family after over 20 years uh, been out of the land. He's coming back with his family. He's about to meet with the angel. And uh, this is the crossing place, the what's called the Yabuk 
as you know in scripture it says the Abuk. Uh, that's right behind me uh, and that's Jordan. We just saw some Jordanian soldiers who are guarding this uh, position. This is a right now a closed area for, um, uh, for visitors uh, more or less. You have to get here with military permission and escort and all this stuff. But uh, this is a very significant place. This is where the people of Israel become the people of Israel. This is where uh, Jacob becomes Israel. This is where he gets the identity, he gets the name. Ironically, this is also where, in this uh, geographical area too, is the Gilgal, the crossing over of the children of Israel years later out of Egypt when they're coming to inherit the land. After our short visit at the Adam Bridge, we then make our way over to the Gilgal footprint, just about a nine minute drive away. All right, this is a pretty cool place, guys. I'm gonna take you to an overlooked spot to be able to show you the uh, full, the full uh, view of this location because on the ground where I'm standing right now, you don't see really much of anything. You just see a bunch of rocks spread out here. But up at the, um, the overlook point, you'll be able to see better what it is that we're standing in right here, which uh, there are many suggestions as to what this site is. And uh, not many tours come here, in fact. Um, if you join me though, we'll be coming here. We'll be checking this place out. This is, uh, again, a very significant spot many are suggesting. This is definitely one of those places that very few tours come and see, but has a lot of very interesting and significant uh, archeological find here. So we'll go check this out. Here, come with me. All right, here we are at the uh, location of the uh, footprint just here behind me. It's a really cool spot here in the Jordan Valley. Um, many ideas as to what this place served. Some say this was Gilgal, the place of the Gilgal in the Bible, the crossing and so on. Uh, also, some are suggesting this was a place of gathering, a place of the Chaj, Chag, the uh, gathering together, the 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 Aliyah la Regel, the going up to uh, la Regel, as we say in the Hebrew, the going up to, as we know, Aliyah, you make Aliyah to Jerusalem for the holidays. So some are also suggesting this is the place of the Aliyah la Regel because of the footprint, uh, the going up to the foot. Uh, so this might have been a place where they gathered, they met. There's uh, all kinds of interesting stuff here. But uh, again, nothing conclusive. There's no homes here. There are no living places. So almost for sure by saying this is a place of gathering, a place of meeting, a meeting point, possibly a sacrificial uh, spot here uh, behind me. Uh, but it's uh, round, it's not square like most of the sacrificial places uh, or, or m much of the sacrificial uh, uh, um, altars in the land. Uh, so being that it's a, a circular, it's a little weird, but they also found some animal bones, kosher animal bones. Again, not enough to suggest that this was an actual place of sacrifice or, or whatever. So, here we go. After visiting the site of the Gilgal footprint, we then make a drive down south on Highway 90, making our way to the Habika Memorial that was built to commemorate those who fought during the War of Attrition. Okay, so right behind me is the uh, memorial for the fallen soldiers who have fallen here in the Jordan Valley. So it's called the Jordan Valley Memorial Site. And you can see behind me this uh, dark structure with the white there. Uh, in fact, it's one of the first um, structures made to uh, memorialize uh, fallen soldiers in the land of Israel and kind of set a standard on how you make these memorials in the rest of the country. And uh, so it's a very important memorial to commemorate the uh, bravery of the soldiers in the early uh, years uh, when we didn't have peace with Jordan and we had what's called the Milchemet Atasha, the 
I don't know what it is in English, but it's the like it, 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 the word atasha comes from to wear you out. Uh, they would send in uh, uh, terrorists, fedayin, and all that from Jordan into uh, mainland Israel. They would cross over the the, the sketchy border here along the Jordan uh, River. They just cross over into mainland Israel. They cross into the communities here, create a terrorist attack, and then the trick was for the soldiers to who were led by um, trackers, Bedouin trackers usually, and this is part of how we still do, uh, how we still have in our militaries, you usually have a Bedouin who, who leads the force and basically tracks down the tracks of the terrorists who either enter the country through the northern border, the Gaza border, or Egyptian, or, or here. Uh, so during those years, uh, from mainly in 67 all the way till 1970, until um, King Hussein kicked out the terrorists, and then which their next hub became uh, Lebanon, and then that also became the PA, who then later on came into uh, mainland Israel and uh, set up their headquarters in Ramallah. So anyhow, that's kind of the history of this uh, site here, this uh, memorial to memorialize the soldiers, the brave uh, individuals who, 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 who fought to thwart those uh, terrorist attacks here in the Jordan Valley. So after about another 20 minute drive back down south, making our way back towards Jerusalem, we made a stop at the famous baptismal site known as Kasser Yehud. This is where some believe John the Baptist had been baptizing, at least around this region. And this is also known in the Bible where the children of Israel crossed over the Jordan. If you remember, they led the, the ark into the Jordan with the priests first and the Jordan River stopped and they were able to cross on dry ground. You also know the story of Elijah and Elisha. They also crossed over here twice. First time with Elijah, then he got cut up uh, in the chariot of fire. And then Elisha comes back alone and again splits the Jordan River and crosses over on dry ground. So a very important place with a lot of stories that converge all in one place. All right, so we're here at the Gerasimo uh, Monastery here in the Jordan Valley. It's actually one of the first ones to be established in the first century here in the Jordan Valley. Uh, and in fact, the concept of um, the whole monks and, and all that and, and living in solitude and, 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 and you know, etc. Uh, so the, the monastery is actually named after Geras Gerasimo, who is the, I'm butchering his name, who was the guy who basically um, birthed that idea. Not an original idea. Uh, the Jewish people also had a form of, uh, um, uh, of like being a, a, like monk-like. They didn't use the same word exactly, uh, although in the Hebrew we use the same word, um, and that was down in Egypt. Uh, those who wanted to leave society, get disconnected from society, detach themselves, and to go out and go into solitude and uh, and then later on that developed with time where they lived more in a commune style but still with uh, times of solitude and so on so anyhow just another interesting site here in the Jordan Valley uh, that holds uh, a lot of historic significance to the site and uh, you'll see that in all the b-roll that I'll be uh, uh, throwing in on this all right we are now headed towards Jericho our final location for the day. All right, so it's already late. We're finishing our tour here with uh, the overlook of uh, Jericho here in the backdrop here behind me. Uh, this is Jericho, the uh, city that you hear about in the Bible, the city that most likely many believe this is the spot, but again, there's, um, because of lack of um, archaeological evidence and so on, it's kind of hard to pin down um, because of the fact that basically they didn't find here uh, ruins 
that uh, support the biblical narrative one to one, but you do have uh, very, 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 very old civilization here. In fact, it's one of the oldest civilizations recorded in history is here in Jericho. Uh, lots of very ancient history, lots of very interesting um, uh, archaeological uh, uh, finds here. And uh, just again, another great spot when you're coming through the Jordan Valley. This overlook right here that we're on is just a beautiful overlook. Uh, better, of course, during the daytime, but at the same time, we're on the Jordan Valley, so it's nice to have this cool breeze finishing off this, uh, this uh, day's tour uh, as we're heading back to Jerusalem. So here we go, guys, finishing up, wrapping up. I hope you enjoyed this uh, vlog. I hope you enjoyed the content. Keep watching. Make sure to subscribe. Uh, follow the, the videos as they keep being uploaded because this is going to be uh, every week. And uh, thank you for watching. Thank you.